very good evening to you and thank you so much for sticking to Y254 TV. My name is Cheryl Blessing and you are watching The Power Talk Show. Now this evening we're having a different kind of conversation. We want to focus on one interesting individual whose life has had so many ups and downs but he has managed to come out of the other side and be so much better than the way he started. So this is an, uh, he's a gospel minister, he's been an artist for some time since he was in high school and right now he's come to share his story, he's come to share how he has overcome so many hardships and he has managed to share the gospel and see the good in life through it all. So joining me live on set is Geoffrey Hedrins, yeah. who is a gospel minister. Karibu sana Geoffrey. Thank you. Sante san. It's so lovely to have you this evening. It's a pleasure to be in uh, Y254. Yeah. And I'm so much uh, humbled. Thank you. It's such yeah. a pleasure to have you here as well. Thank you. Thank and you. I'm looking forward to hearing more about your story because you've just mm -hmm. given us just a titbit. You've told us that you are abandoned by your mom at mm -hmm. a very young age. Yeah, you were still true. a child. And at some point, you were even buried alive. Mm -hmm. So there are so many interesting things that have gone through your life. And right now you're 24, mm -hmm. and you're a gospel minister, and you're still spreading the word of God yeah, sure. through the hurdles that you've endured. Yeah. So I want to get more on this. I know you've been captivated just by hearing that he was buried alive. Your curiosity is going to be satiated very shortly. So we're going to address this conversation. We're going to find out what exactly happened through Geoffrey's life and how has he managed to get to the other end where he can proudly speak the word of God and minister the word. So I want to hear from you as well as we continue with this conversation. You can share a testimony that you have. Anything where you feel like you've experienced such hardships but you have managed to overcome them. I want to hear your story and you can do that by going on our social media platforms which is at Y254, that is on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. You can write me anything that you want to share. If you have a comment on the conversation, if you have a testimony, if you have a story that you feel like will really help someone else who's watching this show, please share that and we will sample that as we progress with the conversation. So. I think I'm so fascinated by your story because <laughs> yeah. of so many reasons, right. but mostly because you're here today. Thank you. And you're happy and you seem like life is good. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, so many we, people we, like we, dealing. We, yeah, we term it as uh, grace. Yeah, as exactly. happy today is just by grace. It's by grace. And mercies of God. So I want to understand yeah. how you have gotten to a point where you can acknowledge and say, this is the grace of God. Yes, yeah, sure. So maybe you can start by telling us just briefly, or right. you can extensively, I don't want you to call Refu because mm -hmm. we are so interested in <laughs> finding out who Jeffrey Hedrins is. Yeah, sure. Tell us about your early childhood right. because you have shared that your mom left you at a very young age. Yeah, sure. So share what that experience was, what happened that she left you there, mm -hmm. who did she leave you with, and right. how did you overcome that, especially as a child? Wow. Now, Jeffrey Hedrins. <laughs> I know the headrins is a, a little bit complicated and uh, calling it, but you know, we lose. We thank <laughs> God for such big names. Yeah, uh, Geoffrey Headrins is a young man, uh, aged 24, soon turning 25 by grace, uh, born in Kisumu County at a place known as Kano Plains. Mal imagine at Ubeba, but we thank God I couldn't be <laughs> now may survive for 24 <laughs> years of your life. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, being born uh, early 2000, that is the 11th January, uh, like any other person can be born with a parent. Uh, my mom gave birth to me at a tender age, very tender age, around 16, when she was sweet 16. Mm -hmm. And uh, unfortunately, she didn't know the man, and uh, due to pressure, of the family, I guess so, she decided to abandon, uh, I mean, leave the child, that is sp the one speaking to you here, and uh, after three days in the hands of her mom, that's my grandmother. So luckily, my grandmother also had uh, given birth, was about to give birth. So we were, we were like twins, me and uh, my mom's younger sister, mm. we were like twins. So. She had no option, the grandmom, because uh, they had searched for my mom, looked for her, but they couldn't hear uh, any uh, where she was. But she just ran, leaving no any notice. 
So uh, I had to, she had to take the responsibility, the grandmom. She had to take care of me now. At some point, she could nurse me. We could fight for the breast milk with the aunt. And uh, life was becoming horrible at some point. I knew her as my mom because my, when I opened my eyes, she's the one I saw. So it was tough. My, my bigger aunts at some point were like, no, sh this is not your mom, this is your grandma. But my grandmother, every time she could say, I am your mom. Yeah, I think she was trying to cover up things at least. I don't have the stress of not having a mom at a tender age. So I grew up knowing her as my mom. So growing up, complications, health complications began arising. And uh, it was not so much easy for her to, 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 to take. And uh, uh, I began, she began visiting with me various hospitals for checkups and for medical, uh, I mean, lookups so that they can see what can be done. And at some point it could be fever, at some point could be headache, some point could be rashes, my body turning pale. That is about around three years, two years, one year old. And uh, she didn't find it easy because the medics couldn't also uh, realize or see uh, what the problem or the cause of the, the diseases were. So they tried, went to Russia, that is referral, Kisumu Referral Hospital. Mm -hmm. I uh, went even to Kenyatta, they brought me to Nairobi, took me back, there were no any help. There was nothing there that was, was nothing. noticeable. Yes. And you know this is, it's a bit sad because okay. first your mom was a teenager essentially, yeah. she yeah. was very young and this was 2000. Yeah, early 2000. That was Kitambo and you yeah. know back then culture was still a bit strict. Yeah, true. About you as a woman bringing a child as early. You know, you know eh. my, yeah, my mom was also brought up in a family, religious family. Yeah. So the reputation of the dad, oh. she was trying also to keep it. And so things that also may tough. have, that yeah, is just may some of the to factors that contribute. Yeah, because she was afraid like, oh, the dad is a pastor, mm. he has a church, how will the fellow youth see me, yeah. how will the church people see? Yeah. So those were the, some of the reasons that I think arose in her head mm. and she decided to run. To Although you. I didn't see it bad because by God's hand, I'm this far you and God yeah. held me, so I don't... I don't hold her anything. Yeah. So uh, it was not easy. And uh, at four years old, now they decided to, to do the, the herbal, the herbal medicine stuffs, mm -hmm. where at some point I could be placed in a, in a basin covered with a mattress. Unajua kitamba kukua na duve? Kukua na mattress, yeah? And I like a blanketi. I like a blanketi kuna manyo ya. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. So they could cover me with that. And uh, let me just quote this. I don't know exactly the tree, but in our local la language, you call it obir. Mm. Obir, okay? So the leaves, they could use the leaves and, the, and, the, and the, the, they, they could cut the stems, parts of the stems, they, 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 they boiled, they, mm. they boil, they boil it very well. And then the water, okay? The water, naoshwa na nayo. Get the point. And this was happening frequently because yes. while you recommend every you day, by yes, someone tried the herbalist uh, recommended ah. that. And you were three years old, old at this point because yes, you've four. been to hospital, yes, they can't find anything, yes, my and body right is turning pale yellow, ah. I can't eat, I'm a very poor feeder, mm. yeah, I mean, no appetite. There was loss of appetite, actually, I'm, I'm very thin, even up to date, yeah. Now, Kwanza Mulongi me back evil. Oh, and that, that was at, particularly at, when it, you compared even now, to I don't love food. Ah, yeah, I, effect I, I eat it. rarely. Because you know, I'm trying to figure out. Mm. You mentioned that your your grandma was also expectant. Yeah. So this was. So was you know, it I was your also an uncle. Uh, I was also. I was also. No, my aunt. So it's an aunt. It's yes. a girl who was born yes. after. Yes. So we were. We were. We were. We were. We were sucking the same milk. And when you compare with her, yeah. your health was much worse than hers. Yes. Okay. She was totally perfect. Mm. Hers, she grew up very well. She didn't even have complications health mm. ways. And, and did your grandma ever tell you what drove her to your point here? Yeah? Let me look for traditional means of healing this boy. Uh, uh, that is automatically because uh, the, 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 the hospital can't provide a solution. So she couldn't leave me to die with the illness because day and night I couldn't sleep. Mm. Eh, what, mimi nikulia. 
24/7 daytime nikulia the, the the sickness is worse but the doctors can't tell the cause oh, so the she illness. had to go extra mile yeah. that is now going to look for the herbalists yeah. now the herbalist came with suggestions yeah, uh, you know, in our local language, I'll just use the, uh, the Lewis, they understand there are some sickness known as a chidnade. A chidnade means like uh, how, how, you may kuja na mnagani. Because mm. yeah, no eh, you know, the, the curious thing, you've mentioned your grandparents were very yeah. religious. Mm -hmm. So for the, for the fact that your grandma had to go an extra mile mm -hmm. and seek something outside of mm -hmm. God mm -hmm. for her to find a solution, mm -hmm. It's very, it must have been at a point of desperation. She must yeah, have it been not, desperate. Not even too. desperation. Apart from desperation, part of it is like, uh, yani they were fighting for life. Mm. They're praying, yes. Mm -hmm. But solution is not there. Things are tough. Okay. The, 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 the condition is worsening day and night. Okay. I'm thin. They can see my, my bones. Oh, no. You get the and point. That's so sad for a so young child. Yes, and I was also, and I was the only one. Who's sick, who's suffering in that manner? And I was the only child. Oh. My mom didn't have any other child. Yeah. It's so they the have to prioritize child. your yes. health and your life. Because she's not also there. They don't know how we're about. They know if she's dead or she's alive. So they have at least to remain with a copy. Yes. So they have to fight for my health. Yeah. yeah. So it was, not, it was not easy. At some point, uh, when I was told about this, it pained me. Uh, that is after Form 4. It pained me when uh, I finished Form 4 and I went to a shop. Mm -hmm. And these drunkard people, uh, they love talking sense at some point when they are drunk. Mm -hmm. So one, one of them just decided, is this the grandson of mm -hmm. Nerea? You mean he, he survived? Mm -hmm. He's big like this today? Surely God, is a, God, God exists. And he was shocked yeah, by Yeah, that. until he, he, he quoted this guy, we, we buried him, striving for his health, just for him to walk. I really took time to walk. These mm. health, uh, health issues uh, interfered even with my body, my mm. bones. My bones were weak. I couldn't walk. With the growth. Literally. So let's go back I to now when you were being washed yeah. and they were doing all these things to try. Did it work at that it point? It never worked. So what, what was the next solution? The next solution was now being taken to you, Tanzania. Okay. Yes, I was now taken to Tanzania for a, a bigger herbalist. Mm -hmm. But me, I call, it, I call her witch doctor. Now, he's the one who brought the issue of being buried, where I was uh, a three-quarter buried, I think, up to my neck, from mm -hmm. 10 p.m. in the night to, 12, to, to, to 4 a.m. in the morning. And at what age were you? When Around you were five buried? years. And you were aware throughout the entire process? You were awake and alert? Yes. I never slept. My eyes were still. They, stand, they stood still and they were white. So everybody ran. I was only with my grandmother. Oh no. So my grandmother is the one who saw this and uh, she felt pain. And Alini Chimba, Akanito at 4 a.m. and she ran with me to church. She cried the whole day, holding me, crying, literally crying. It was very hectic and uh, when she was, uh, at some point she, she couldn't be happy when somebody could even try to beat me. She because she she because she, yes, mm. so I didn't even through because of that I didn't even go to nursery. Because yeah, they I were busy taking you from one hospital yeah, to another, yeah. trying to figure out. And then she realized later, around eight years, that now I was becoming big, and I have to learn. So she had now to begin carrying me to school. You can imagine oh. at eight years you're being carried because I couldn't still walk; I was crippled. Oh no. So I was being taken to school. And throughout, from when you were born, you were growing, because I can imagine you're growing at the same rate with your, your, with my aunt, your yeah. aunt. My aunt, your yeah, aunt is okay. Somato. Wewe bado uko kwa nyumba. Bado so kwa at, nyumba. Uh, because children start working at about yeah. at one and a half years, two years. At some point they could laugh at me. At some point you're being told, we pia jaribu leo utembe, nini nina kufanya. But mm. my grandmother was like, no, 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 no. no. You'll utamumiza. Because yeah. you could see the weak bones how they were behaving, so I, I couldn't I could I, I, I couldn't I couldn't be allowed even to work at some point. As I could I could nige nda haja kuba where I'm just seated mm. at a bigger age. I was around seven years, six years. Yeah. So my grandmom could take me to school, carry me back in the evening. Pupils laugh, and uh, the funny thing is that. 
nilikuwa na i was na ma quick learner at that point i could still be in top 3 which is amazing yes cuz considering you've not gone through preschool and you've just joined yeah. class 1 at probably 7 8 years at 8 years mm. uh, actually until i repeated class 1 because oh. my grandmother wanted i repeated class 1 yet i was cl- i was number 3 because why why was the reason why my grandmother wanted my aunt to be ahead oh of me. yes because we at were this fighting. point she was she was 7 years old yeah to look at in the same class Ah. so she we could uh, fight what so my grandmother said no for respect to be here i want we najua amechukua number 3 can you imagine at number 3 class 1 yeah. so I be, yeah i began walking in uh, december of that same year yes that is what, when what, what the the, the, the students the pupils okay i name is students because high school mm. the pupils the pressure the mockery so one of my friends and one of my teachers just d- decided to hold me kwa nanitembeza kidogo 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 then one day a miracle happened and the school was like what hedrins is walking today so that is when i began nilianza but i couldn't walk long distance just kidogo kidogo yes like i could walk from here to where you are okay. then i sit down again i but walked there from was there some change. yes so from there like that at class 2 now i could walk from class to the latrine mm-hmm. come back but my grandmom still didn't want uh, she still overprotective yeah, and she, 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 yeah she still didn't believe it and um, through god's grace i also decided to some things are just god i decided yeah. now to love god could sing in sunday school sing in school and you can't go quite close so much close to god but, but i never knew that my mom uh, existed because i only yeah. knew my grandmother you thought as your my grandma mom. was your mother yes i'm but also as curious goes, to find because yeah. you were you were such a young child and you're going through all of these things you have literally seen una joke wa mgonjwa already your body is weak it has taken I, a toll uh, on you i was uh, i mature dali Mm. and i could uh, i could i could i could see and and understand what's going because yes. i can imagine you've seen that you've seen yourself being buried alive then my mind alive. was so sharp yeah Nukwana and how was how was Nukwana that was there an impact on your mental health how were you as a ch- were you happy were you just sad? i was never happy mm. actually i've grown a very moody guy oh nowadays people when i post some pictures people are like i love your smile but me deep down i i know I never grew up uh, a happy guy. Smiling and happy. I never grew up a happy person. Did you believe that you were paralyzed when you were growing up? Did you ever th- at, at any point did yes. you think that you could walk? Yes. There was a day there was a day there was a day I fell down at class 3 when I was going back to school in the afternoon and I lost conscious for 3 hours. Oh no. Yes, and I was bedridden for 3 months. Oh no. Yes. And you think what what I'm noticing from your story it may also be because of the lack of prenatal care that yeah. your mother didn't undergo because yes. she was probably hiding the pregnancy and she couldn't go to the clinic find the right supplement so that it can help you grow even I'm a, I'm a person grow. who I'm a person who never got even uh, a good parental care. Mm. Yes, I was never because my grandmother was trying it but My, my my relative my aunts could uh, fight it seriously so uh, they would your aunts would they, fight it in what way they would say this is not your mom you should know that this is your and they mom. would tell you yeah even at class 3 at class 2 this is not your mom at some point i could be told this is not your home oh no yeah this is not your home you, sh- you should know that and this these are your grandmother. older aunts They're, they they yeah. were older than no, your mother no my mom was older than them they were younger than your mother yeah That's very funny. My so, mom, my mom is big. Yeah. And how many aunts were there? I'm trying to find a situ- I'm trying to uh, My, my to grand see the my picture. grandfather gave birth to not gave birth. Sorry, my grandfather married uh, three wives. Okay. So I have many aunts. Oh. Even from other grandmothers. Yeah. So most of them were And still uh, at home in the homestead yeah, while yeah. you were Somewhere there. Some were in high school, okay. some were in college. But my mom unfortunately didn't manage to complete class 8. Yeah. Yeah. So did you ever have that conversation with your grandma as a child? Did you ever uh, ask her uh, where is my mom or who is my mom? 
when you're going through life, at some point you can't get the exact reason why you're going through. Yeah. But you can get it from people. Okay. People close to you. Their actions can speak it. Yes. You know, somebody, uh, you know, um, I, I, I can know the uh, I can know the reason why you are going through something and you can know through my action towards you yeah. how I behave whenever you are going through it that's true yeah whenever that's you are true. going through something I can behave likely to suggest and that can automatically tell you uh, that I know mm. what you're going through and you know that that is I, I can imagine as a child who has that much emotional intelligence mm the mental trauma that you had to undergo. I really faced I really faced uh, mental torture I really faced a lot mm. uh, mentally it was at some point I'm a person who tried committing suicide three times oh no yes before I reached class seven. Oh no one I was caught at class four when I already tied uh, a rope on my neck and uh, I was almost now climbing the stool Mm. Yeah, and that is when I was rescued by a stranger. Oh. The second, I wanted to do the rat and rat stuff. Yeah, you take the poison. Yeah, I wanted just to put it in the water and do it. I was just fed up. At class four, I was fed up because the, 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 the scary messages, uh, the, the way people handle you, the way people treat you. Uh, my grandmom was a person working daytime, so daytime you are with, you, 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 with your cousins and your relatives at home that you don't find peace. Yeah. You, you are being told, this is not your home, you need to know that. And you are like, no, this is my home. This is my home. She, 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 she's mm. my mother. Yeah. No, at some point, you know, at some point, Ukubali, ukubali. Ukubali. But you know you're a child and it's so sad because mm. this just shows no, how... These people made me mature earlier. Yeah, but yeah, then it shows how bad family can be mm. in affecting the mental health of a child. Mm -hmm. Because as opposed to coming together and saying you're our child regardless, they want to make you feel like you're not part of this home and you're going My grandmother so was much. really playing a bigger role in that. Yeah. She could fight for that. So that at least I may grow up knowing that she is my mom. Everybody there is my blood. I need to understand the fact that that is my home. I am part of them. She was fighting so that I may know that I'm, they are part of me. Yeah. Yes. But it, thank it, God uh, for your they, 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 they really fought it. They really fought it uh, until now the truth had to come out and they had to confess. My grandma had to tell me that now I'm your grandmother. This is your grandfather. We don't know where your, your mom is, but take heart. Love God. We love you. Mm. You are our son. And that happened later on. Because ar around, class, around class five after being born again. I actually yeah. got born again in class five. Oh. And that is when I began singing. Okay. In okay. church, in school. That's when you realize, they probably even realize that's when you have the gift yeah. of singing. And that being is a when they realize. So I was now, so my, my, my attention went to Christian work. Okay, because that's why you had to channel. I could take time in church, channel. school, ta church, school, church, school. I do house chores, house chores, then I'm in school, I'm in church. So I grew up knowing God more. So I got rooted in the kingdom mm -hmm. assignment more uh -huh. than anything else. And we thank God for that, especially yeah. since it came at a very young age because you clearly no, needed something No, through those things, I, I, I had no option. Yeah. Life at some point can put you in a, in a, a state where... Uh, that is why I do say, if you see somebody getting pregnant early, don't blame that, that lady. Yeah. Don't think that la that lady is stupid or don't think that that lady has no sense. Life can put that lady to beg a boy mm. for money, even for pads. Yeah. You understand? Because Akuna Pesa, I may grow up family, maybe or I'm tacky, they don't want to support her. But this boyfriend can afford to give her some little cash then automatically the boy will want something in return and yeah. then they fall in bed and are, are pregnant you can't blame her if you, you want yeah understand. if you want to check the course you realize that there was something that led to that to that so when you and begin judging you'll be judging for no reason and you know you're persecuting someone who you don't understand yeah, true. what they are enduring and you are killing that's a very interesting thing because i want yeah. us to stop that conversation mm. just briefly there and then we'll take a break and we come back and progress with your life oh, well. in school. So 
If you've gotten anything from the beginning of this conversation, it's that circumstances are not because of our doing. Mm. You find yourself in circumstances, so you shouldn't put yourself in a place where you're mocking or you're judging someone. True. So stay tuned to Y254 TV. This is the Power Talk Show. And my name is Cheryl Blessing. Meanwhile, go on our social media platforms. Share any comments that you have. If you have a testimony, if you have a question that you'd like to ask us through the show, you can do that on our social media platforms. And as we come back, we will get back to that. So stay tuned to Y254 TV.